This is uh, a, an old story that just continues to give us gifts. Um, for those who aren't familiar, OneCoin was a pyramid scheme that presented itself as a crypto uh, currency. It, it was not a cryptocurrency. There was no blockchain. It didn't exist. Um, but this launched all the way back in 2014. Um, at least the, the company, the coin, I think launched maybe the, year, the next year or the offering. Um, but we have from Jamie Bartlett, the BBC, new reporting this year, um, following up on Ruja Ignatova, the, the founder and sort of figurehead of OneCoin, who has been on the run to unknown international locations for going on five years now. Um, and Bartlett has uncovered some new stuff, very interesting connections, potentially between Ruja and the Bulgarian government. Um, and for me, what this brings up is, and also the governments of the UAE, um, what this brings up to me is just that pyramid schemes have gotten so huge that governments are getting involved. <laughs> and uh, this is not necessarily the official position of the Bulgarian government, but it's elements within it who have decided that, that this is actually somebody they need to defend rather than send to jail. So um, it's very troubling and I think speaks to probably a lot of other stuff going on that we don't have the same visibility into. Um, but uh, what does this say about, I guess, current scams is, is one question that we can ask. Ben, what do you think? Are these are, are governments protecting Do Kwan right now? <laughs> Who knows? I mean, <laughs> I, I do think this is a story that has everything. It's kind of James Bond plus crypto. There's uh, rumors that she uh, has engaged in massive plastic surgery to change her appearance to, to hide away in, in Bulgaria. And actually, we had Bartlett on a podcast uh, a few months ago, and he said, very much this. It was still rumored at the time that she was being helped out by the Secret Service of Bulgaria or hidden elements within the deep state of Bulgaria. And that's really the only way she could have evaded uh, detection and prosecution and uh, capture for so long because most of her uh, co conspirators uh, have definitely been uh, found out and, and locked up. So that there must be something different with her. Um, I, I think this is a fun story. I mean, maybe we shouldn't sort of revel in it too much because there were a lot of uh, uh, victims here, but this is kind of a classic crypto scam and it's kind of uh, James Bond plus crypto plus, uh, plus uh, no blockchain. Uh, so it's kind of fascinating. <laughs> Will? Yeah, it's definitely, definitely a very interesting story for a few different reasons. And one thing I like that you bring up within your article about this, David, is the fact that we often forget about yesterday's crypto scams because we're also focused on today's crypto scams and the people who are being actively hurt within the ecosystem. Crypto is rife with scams. Uh, there's some new reporting on the amount of token pairs on Uniswap that were outright scams. And, you know, it's a high percentage, a high double uh, figure percentage not really shocking for anyone who's in the industry who knows how easy it is to spin up an ERC-20 token and put it onto a decentralized exchange. It's not that hard to do that. Just get a social following and you can make some money doing it if you have the technical know-how. And then if you go back into crypto's history books, there are a lot of these scams. They were harder to do at the time because there wasn't a decentralized platform like Ethereum where you could spin up tokens, but there was ways to do that. You could still just copy and paste the Bitcoin protocol, make a few tweaks, add some marketing to it and go to whatever different different places across the globe and market your new coin. One coin was one of those scams I'm that really to took off, the, right? One of the coins that you described, right? <laughs> but uh, I'll refrain. <laughs> Towards an L, uh, Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of those coins out there. And I, I think it's sad that we forget about them. So I like that the BBC brought this back. I like that we're talking about it on the hash and that you wrote an article about it because there are these scams they still exist. And now that we know that you know there's government agencies involved, uh, two different governments involved with this, and that makes you wonder about power and it makes you wonder about money and how fast money can change people's decisions on these things. The fact that tokens are so liquid, oftentimes it's easy to get money in and out. It's so easy to transfer money to people. That makes it rife for abuse of power. And I think we'll see more of this going on in the future, especially after this 2021 bull pump. David, I want to throw it back to you, get some more insights from you. Yeah, I, just to clarify one thing, um, it's not government agencies per se, but individual actors who aren't necessarily, you know, fulfilling the official mandates of their governments, but who are sort of perhaps working around and leaking stuff and things like that. Um, the other point that I would make about this, which I think is really important and does connect to the present, is it's not just these government 
actors. Um, there are also a lot of indications that this particular scammer was linked up with organized crime and, and really dangerous people. Um, and we've seen that, or at least we've heard hints of that recently. There was some speculation that Three Arrows Capital might have been taking um, capital from uh unsavory people and that does seem to happen quite a bit in crypto again because either a it's stuff that's on the edges of the law or b it's stuff that's an outright scam and people have figured out a way to extract money um so be careful out there i mean and and this isn't necessarily how you set it up at the first at the start people might approach you 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 know you could have partners who want to get involved and they're not necessarily the best people ben you you had something else to add well, I just wanted to kind of uh, make a note about journalism and uh, about these investigations because, I mean, this happened a long time ago in 2014 and there's a temptation, I think, with so many projects, so many scams, so many, you know, misadventures in this industry to kind of forget about it and say it doesn't matter, it's all sort of deep history. Um, but I think it is important to go back and, and kind of find these people and uh, bring them to justice and, and, and to prove that it's that it's really uh, a kind of a cycle of accountability here. Uh, otherwise, mm -hmm. uh, people get away with these things and we forget about these, uh, these, these stories. And, and there were a lot of victims here and they should be uh, uh, made whole somehow, at least in a sort of accountable sense. So that's what I wanted to say. Yes. <laughs> and before we um, transition, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, producers, I'm, I'm not getting any cues from you if you're talking to me. Um, we are, in fact, carrying this forward um, under the CoinDesk umbrella, and we um, we are launching a new podcast. So this is the first we've discussed it publicly uh, that I'll be writing and hosting called Crypto Crooks. Um, we are hoping that the uh, will be out in early December, and we will be going back and visiting some of these older stories uh, similar to the way that, that Jamie Bartlett and the BBC did. So we're very excited about that.